idea because he had to remind me that, uh, you know, pizza. I mean, I didn't have to, he didn't have to remind me that pizza is our signature food. It was more about the sign, but we can, we can get into that later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love so pizza. Tell me too. What's your favorite pizza place in New York? Um, there's, I mean, the first one that comes to mind is a place called, um, Lucali, which is in Carroll Gardens in my neighborhood. So, uh, they have great brick oven pizza and calzones. Very nice. Hi, Dave. How are you? Hi, Sammy. I'm well. How are you? Good, good. So, gentlemen, tell me a little bit about why you decided to do Lego Masters. Wow. Um... I, I guess the, the better question is why did Lego Masters ask me? Because uh, I, am, I am not in the same league as Dave, but um, I decided to do it because I, I had a, I've always had a dream to build Lego. Um, just in any forum, I just love um, collecting sets and reviewing sets and writing about them. And, and I'm just always finding new challenges through Lego. And this was a new challenge for me. So I was up for it. And for me, when else are you going to get a chance to do something at such a high level with some of the best people in the world, with the greatest collection in the world, with a crew that's going to make it all possible for you to do it at such a high level and with experts in the field who are going to help you along your journey. Mm -hmm. And how sure. did you collaborate and meet? Because you're both from different cities. Well, I, um, when I was looking for a partner, um, I remembered that Dave wrote a very profound um, post about like Black Lives Matter on Instagram, and he made he made a build, and I responded to it, and it was very touching and motivating for me at the time, and. Um, a few weeks later, I wrote about one of his builds for a Lego fan blog about plant. It was it was about the IKEA planter um, that he created as a mock, and I was like, you know what? I, this this guy is an amazing builder. He does all the things that I'm passionate about, and it was just on the strength of like activism and environmentalism, and and I was like, this would be a great partnership. So. We had like a two hour long conversation, could have talked for probably three and uh, we were instant friends and instant partners. And you that, would, is so that we would have known each other for years by the time that we got on the show because we spent so much time talking to each other and just really became fast friends. But it's the connections that we made with each other that made it work. Yeah, because I was trying to figure it out. I was like, you know, did I know each other through mutual friends, through college, through, you know, uh, significant others? I was just like, such great friendship. I loved it. Well, filming the show felt like college. So, yeah, or something like it. <laughs> I wish college were that fun. Yeah, and, <laughs> same. Yeah. And how did your families um, react when they found out you were doing the show? Because you did mention your families quite a bit as well. They were shocked. My my son and my wife were just they were speechless. They didn't they but they were very encouraging. Um, they wanted me to go for it and they believed that I could do it. Um, and so yeah, and the other family members were really excited too as well. They just were over the moon at just knowing that I was gonna be on TV. It didn't even matter that I was gonna be building Lego. Are like, you gonna be on TV? That's great. <laughs> My wife and I applied for season one and we actually made it very far in the casting process. Um, but because of the pandemic, she said, you should, I, I can't do it this year, but you should still apply. And I was really happy that Richard did it with me. But, you know, obviously my wife and son are very excited and, you know, everything I built, I really wanted them to be proud of me. But more so it was the 20 years worth of students that were excited that I was going to be on Lego Masters, you know, kids who are now adults who were messaging me and saying, I can't believe I saw you on TV. Now, who do you teach, Dave? I teach kindergarten. <gasps> oh, my sister um, taught um, pre-kindergarten, you know, the K-4s. So it's a good age, it's a good age. Good age. Yeah, I love it. What about you, Richard, are you a teacher too? No, I'm a DJ and writer and 
dad. <laughs> yes. All of, I wear a lot of different hats. So yeah. But yeah, nice. those are my those are my primary focuses. Yeah, because you keep off that teacher vibe. That's why I asked. But you guys are probably the two coolest dads now. Maybe the next time you talk to me, I might be a teacher. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> and what was your favorite challenge that you did? They were all our favorites. I I I had a lot of fun in every challenge. They were they were there was so much learning that went into all of them and a lot of growth, a lot of really great connections with Dave, connections even with other teammates. Um, I mean, not other teammates, uh, other teams. You know, I think it was it was a really good um, experience through and through. Just you can't really pick one by itself because you when you put them all together, they tell a story together. Yes. And which one would you say was the most challenging or most difficult for you to do? <laughs> Our Hats Incredible challenge was really, really tough. Um, it was tough for a lot of reasons because of the weight of the, the headdress, the, the aftermath of it breaking, um, and also just wanting to live up to the expectations of what it was supposed to be. This was a this was called Pride of Carnival. When you when you do something that is supposed to be a reflection of culture or um, LGBTQIA plus rights and 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 the pride in all of those things, you really want to make sure that you're you're delivering and not half stepping or missing something. So we really wanted to nail all of those points and and um, and feel like we were being ambassadors for all of those causes. Dave, what about you? Uh, I would say the, actually the one after that was the most challenging for me because sometimes when you end up in the bottom two, like how do you come back from that? And we really had to think about how we would refocus and be able to get back to feeling good about each build because we it's such it's hard to come back from feeling so down about something even though the build was great uh it's just hard to come back on that emotional roller coaster nice and what's next for you guys i'm hoping to join dave uh at some of the conventions and but outside of Lego, I just want to come and visit him in Chicago. I want him to come visit me in New York. And, you know, maybe the third tier to that is going to Denmark and, or somewhere else. I don't know, somewhere remote, somewhere with a beach, who knows, just and for our families to get together. That's really what I'm thinking about. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to totally agree that it's just being able to connect again in person will be a wonderful experience. Yep. And at least, Dave, you have a good um, story to tell your students what I did over my summer vacation. I was on TV. <laughs> yeah, they've already all been messaging me and said, we can't believe a Lego master is going to be our kid's teacher this year. That's so cute. That's okay. You know, on the first day of school, you're going to have to tell them all about it, right? Uh, I think they're going to be telling me all about it. They have already <laughs> watched the show. Yeah, kids like that. Kids will be like that. That's great. And one thing I like to ask people I interview is I want you each to tell me a fun fact about yourselves. I, I feel like, Dave, you you have better fun facts than me because mine are, I don't know, mine are so wacky. You <laughs> have lived a much more exciting life than I have. Uh, uh, a fun fact about me is that uh, on my first date with my now wife, uh, we met via uh, a dating app, but uh, I had nothing on there about Lego at all. And she asked, what did you do today? And I said, oh, you know, funny that you should ask. I packed up a Lego build that I made to send to a museum in London for an exhibition about crafting. And she was like, what? <laughs> so cute. Yeah. I, I don't know. That. I have, it's, it's, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm really bad at like, fun facts and thinking on the fly I mean I hate for it to be like a celebrity thing and or like something that I DJ it's just not really to me like those are it's not really fun I, I just think it would be like I don't know maybe you know I think a fun fact that's like always very touching for my family is because when I'm 
it, one was when I uh, was working in magazines and I had to interview Erica Badu, singer, producer, DJ, multifaceted person. And she, my wife was pregnant at the time and she was very conscious of like her body bouncing back from being pregnant. And so, and we didn't know anyone who's pregnant. So uh, I just mentioned to Erica Badu that my wife was pregnant and she told me, she wrote a letter to my wife about her body bouncing back and being confident and like, like from mother to mother. And she'd already had like maybe one or two kids at that point. So we framed it. And ever since then, I've always admired Erica Badu as like the fairy godmother. So, yeah. That is beautiful. She's Thank so you. lucky. And before I let you go, I just want to say you did incredible this season. I'm very proud of you. And I can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Thank Sammy. You. It's great talking Thanks. to you. Likewise. Bye. Hi, Sammy. And real quick, um, before